I know. So how many people remember um, Go Fix? How many people ever use GoFump to essentially implement generics? <laughs> when there was make files, right? Okay. Um, I actually like, I think I have a purple gopher, a pink gopher, the blue gopher, and I have the little, this, this guy, and he's my favorite. He was one of the original ones I remember. Um, this is uh, about me, which we're going to quickly skip over. Uh, if you want to know, uh, ask me later. Um, anyone use Cloud Foundry in here? Everyone heard of Cloud Foundry? Okay. Anyone ever heard of like Rendezvous or EMS, messaging systems and financial services stuff? Well, throw stuff at me later. Um, Continuum is uh, a product that Epsara uh, created. It's a deployment platform, right, that empowers IT to seamlessly implement policy amidst agile innovation. The key point about it is it's completely written in Go. Nobody cares about what we actually do. Maybe you do. Um, but it was written in Go, which was very interesting because coming from Cloud Foundry, which was written in Ruby, um, using Event Machine, uh, which was, there's a question on Core about why in the heck would someone ever do that? And I simply responded because I liked the language at the time. Um, it was a decision for the team, and it was between Go and Node.js. And I think, you know, people disagree. I thought it was about a 15-minute conversation, and we've never looked back. Um, but what's interesting about what we've done is, is utilizing Go. Um, I made a prediction uh, in 2012. I don't make very many predictions, and I was wrong on this one. Um, I thought that Go would dominate um, as a language for systems work in IES and orchestration and PaaS and all that kind of stuff, even though uh, PaaS, I don't know if that it still exists or not. As a matter of fact, though Blake's here, one of the people of Heroku, kind of the original one, along with Google App Engine. Um, but I don't think I was off by much. It's amazing how many people were actually using this language. Um, there's a Go users wiki uh, about how many different people use it. Um, but just knowing that, you know, the undercurrents, and again, for me, um, I remember when Java was called Oak, and I remember some of the first Java conferences. Um, and I was lucky enough to go to GopherCon uh, in Denver, and it was amazing. Not only the fact that 700 plus people showed up, but the energy, the quality of the talks, and, and what I liked about it was is that it was serial, right? So you could actually see all of the different talks. Um, it was an amazing conference. And so I do believe that this is gonna happen. Uh, if it hasn't already, some people might argue with me and say it has. Um, and this is my proof, right? Anyone know who's on the left? Matt. Um, great guy, very, very nice man. Um, I've got to present at a lot of the Ruby conferences with him early on. Um, and he will, you know, give credit where credit is due. So who really uses this? Now this is by no means exhaustive whatsoever. But I think it's kind of interesting, especially like on the top left with Google. Google was using it internally, and uh, for about five years, I got to call Google home. Um, I was mostly doing Java, some Python, although that took me almost six months to get code reviewed, qualified by a 22-year-old saying, you don't know what you're doing, which they were right. Um, <laughs> anybody know about Kubernetes? Yeah, yeah. I remember Borg. I, don't, I was never privy to Omega. Um, but Google's really in on uh, kind of not only Go and some of the stuff that they might or might not talk about this week at Google I.O., um, but a lot of the cool kids are, are up here, right? You know, Docker. Who uses Docker? Yeah. Docker's pretty cool stuff. Um, CoreOS, etcd, confd, Blake, you don't count. You have to use it. Blake will be talking about that in, in a second. And like I said, there's so many more, but it's interesting to me um, how many people are moving to it very quickly. And it's, it's easy to start with without saying we have to rewrite the whole world, right? We can actually start very small and do small pieces. Um, Absera, though, we started at day one and said everything is going to be in Go. So we have an unfair advantage, I think. Um, even at Cloud Foundry, when I was leaving VMware, I said, love Ruby for development. Production's challenging. There's some issues there. You guys should switch to Go. And I kind of left. And I think they're switching everything over to that as we speak. 
So why go? Um, for me, you know, it was a decision that I put forth to the team. I had been using it since, I might get this wrong, 0.56, is that a release? Yeah. 0.56, 0.52 or so, where we used to use GoFix for every release that came out. That's why I was asking the question. Um, it's simple language, and I think as people adopt Go and they stay with Go, they appreciate that more. So the nope that Andrew put up there, that was the one that I want to applaud to the most. Um, I don't share everyone's opinion about generics, don't care about those. Um, but I do like something that's simple. And for me, what was very, very interesting with Go is, is that when I went back to the language, like two weeks later, because of writing in different languages, I actually understood what the heck I was writing. A lot of times in other languages, I can't remember what I was even thinking when I was writing it. And it takes me 20 minutes or so to just remember what I was trying to do. It has a good standard library, um, and it's getting better, faster. It does have the concurrency primitives. Um, it has a synchronous programming model, which for those who have uh, utilized Node.js, which I was a big fan of Node.js, um, up to a certain size, right? And then when you get past that size, you almost start doing unnatural acts to kind of manage some of the, the callback sprawl. And so a lot of the Node.js uh, fan club says, oh no, it's fine for very, very big things. Um, but I would respectfully disagree. Um, garbage collection was great, um, but again, I remember uh, Java when it was called Oak. Um, I also remember two days of my life at Google that I will never get back in my lifetime where all I did was study Java, GC, flags, and different combinations on the service that we were running at Google to try to get the pauses down. Um, I'm not saying that pauses don't exist in Go, but I've never actually had to debug one whatsoever. And the reason is, one of my favorite things, is that they had real stacks. So at GopherCon, I think I threw up my very first Go program, which I tested to make sure stacks were real, that they had no impact on the heap whatsoever. And it, again, you'll hear me say things like unnatural acts. A lot of, uh, anyone programming Java still in here? How many people have programmed in the past lifetime? How many people have rewritten their application to produce less garbage so that the garbage collector doesn't interfere with what they're trying to do? Yeah. Then all of a sudden it gets really hard to understand what the heck you're trying to do. And, and in Go, for me, it was very easy. I just stick it on a stack. You know what I mean? It gets thrown away. And the escape analysis was kind of primitive in the 0.56 days, but it's, it's getting better faster. Um, a lot of people who know me, I talk about VHS versus Betamax. Most people in this room probably only know what Betamax is. but. Getting better faster is something within technology you should always watch for. Yet, it, they're not getting better faster by adding stuff in, right? They're just looking at what makes the language the best applied language to do something. Um, a little while ago, I made a, uh, I was actually with Matt down at uh, Stanford, and um, I talked about the fact that I love programming languages as much as anyone else does, but it seems as an industry sometimes, we get uh, caught up in the paint brushes and not the painting itself. Um, and, and Go is very much uh, how do we get stuff done, right? And it was born out of some amazing talent that's here. Um, and also the applicability of I don't want to wait 45 minutes for my C++ binary Google to link. Um, but Stacks is a big one, at least for me. Um, it's not C or C++. I still love C. still probably my favorite language. I've always hated C++. Um, it just does too many things that I don't understand what's going on. That's my fault, I'm sure, but um, for me, a big reason was it wasn't those languages. And it's not Java or any JVM-based language. Um, a lot of industry uh, within the enterprise uh, scope is, oh, you can go into production if it's not a JVM. Um, one of the really interesting things, without giving away too many secrets, but at Google, when we first had chargeback come back, my belief, and I could be wrong, was it was implemented because Larry was upset at how much resources the Gmail team was using. Um, and 90% of our budget on the chargeback was just on memory. And so when you look at, you know, spin up time and then how much memory, you know, it takes to run a Java application, even a long living one, um, versus something like Go, um, it's a pretty big deal. Um, and it's not Ruby, Python, or, or Node.js. How many people actually use Go day to day? How many people came from the C, C++, Java land? How many came from Ruby, Python, things like that? That's pretty interesting. Earlier on, I, I would have bet, and, and Rob can yell at me if I was wrong, that the assumption was most people would be coming from C++. But earlier on, I think more people were coming from the scripting side, 
but it seems to have balanced out, uh, which is pretty interesting. Um, so why go it up, Sarah? Um, for me, you know, Go is the best choice for distributed systems. You know, you may or may not want to do it for front-end stuff. Um, you may or may not want to do it for mobile, although I would imagine with the Android announcements that are coming and some fun stuff that I would imagine at Google I.O. that will change. Um, one of the things that we do internally at AppSera is we make our whole system testable by every component just being a Go routine. So we can actually do, not necessarily unit testing, but kind of functional testing with multiple components that never actually have you know, an OS exec type of a path, right? We just spin them up as Go routines within the same space. Now we do lots of black box test testing where this, they're actually physically different components, different net network addresses, but that's kind of a pretty good one. Uh, it's a good core language. It's great-ish performance. If you're coming from Ruby Python, it's great with an exclamation point. Uh, if you're coming from C, it's there's a couple things that, that or Java, to be honest with you, there's some things that we'd like to get faster, but I have the utmost confidence that, that we'll get where we need to go. For me, it's easy to hire talent um, because uh, it's easy to understand in Grok, meaning I don't want someone who has Go experience. Now I might change that, right? I'm looking at you know a pretty big audience here. But earlier on, one of the decisions we had to make was, is, is it going to be painful for us to spin people up who've never programmed in Go? I think everyone has a different version of, of the world, but for us, it's about two weeks to kind of get your first medium-sized thing in. Another two to three, four weeks. Uh, a lot of the AppSera teams here still disagree or agree, uh, to get pretty good at it, right? It's, it's not a complex language to understand. If you have good basic architectural decision making in other languages, it transfers very easily to Go. Um, good standard library support, again, that Betamax uh, comment, getting better faster. And this is the one that I think really has sold me after the fact, which is the tooling. I do love the core language. I like things that are simple and they apply. They're not just theoretical, Haskell, okay, well, no offense to those languages. They make me think different, but I don't want to program them every day. Um, but the tooling is amazing, and it's become a critical path within AppSera, uh, all of the tools, the go vet, go fump, go test minus race, please, please, please use minus race on all your tests in your CI systems. Um, it, it is very, very good, and they're investing. For example, the static analysis thing, I think, um, our engineering lead just sent out something about a week ago about, about it, and I still have it on my to-do list to read, but uh, the static analysis tool is pretty cool. I think it does both pointer and type-based uh, analysis, which is pretty slick. Um, inside of Google, there was a lot of the original tooling that showed up in Go, especially around PProf and things, um, but the team, uh, the Golang team, is really kind of taking it um, further and, and probably introducing other things uh, as well. Um, so how do you build like a cloud OS, at least for us, right? You need a messaging system. Uh, I'm a messaging guy, so you might say, no, you don't. I'm always going to say, yes, you do. Uh, you need a distributed scheduling system, an orchestrator. For us, a policy engine, right? All of those cool things with Docker. It's really cool when you can do it, and it's not as cool when everybody can do it. Because you want to say, well, wait a minute, I don't want this guy to do it or this girl to do it. Um, and one of the things that we were looking at in starting up Sarah was policy. So uh, we have a pretty massive investment in a uh, what we think is a pretty slick distributed policy system. Isolation, which is being dominated right now by Docker. Uh, me and Steve Herod at, at VMware used to argue uh, hypervisors are too heavy and they'll never actually um, keep living on. Uh, I'm probably wrong about that, but anyone who knows Steve, he's an amazing guy, he's fun to, to have debates with. And at least for us, uh, semantically aware communications. And we, we do all this transparently. And what that means is, is it's not about me or you running inside of a system. It's not even about the fact that we can talk to each other. It's actually how we're talking to each other at 2 p.m. on a Tuesday. And does that actually look normal? And can we do that totally transparently where there's no code changes whatsoever in your database of choice or your application workload language of choice? So um, I built a, a high-performance messaging system. I built it in Ruby at first. There's 150,000 messages a second. Um, right now, it's greater than 5 million messages a second. Um, John who's in the audience from the AppSera team was like, that's great, but if you run it with a race detector. So I was one of the first guinea pigs that when I ran it, it failed horribly, um, but it is clean now. Um, and it's totally secure. We have a distributed scheduling system, so akin to um, mostly probably uh, Omega, which is the only true parallel distributed uh, scheduler I know of. But things like Diego out of the Cloud Foundry projects, Kubernetes from Google, uh, and of course Mesos. Um, and Orchestrator, um, you know, I think looking at Chef, which is what we use internally for staging some of the, uh, the systems. Um, 
the server was kind of big. And so with Go, it was not that big of a deal for us to just write our own lightweight server. And the guy that wrote that is actually back here too, who's our lead architect for the system. Um, both G, uh, vSphere and OpenStack uh, APIs are there. The policy engine, again, we wrote a new policy language. I should have used Rob's uh, thing, but I didn't. Uh, I did a low-level lecture and stuff. Isolation with secure printer networking. The C group container work, we're probably going to devote some of that stuff into lib container under the Docker project. And then ask me later about all the, the magic to make the semantically aware stuff to work. So where we're headed, this is repeating kind of some of the stuff Andrew said. Um, stack's now contiguous, they're precise. Defer is more performant. Thank you, Russ Cox. Uh, I think he did a lot of that at GopherCon. The race detector, again, please, please, please. Who uses this by default in their CI system? Ah, okay, you got to... You have to fix that for me. Um, go on Android and the Chrome OS via the uh, native client. And at least one of my favorite that I think Russ put in for me, um, I was doing a lot of protocol buffer stuff and I was doing hash maps. Um, maps inside of Go need a string. They can't use a byte slice. And so going from a byte slice to a string was a copy. And uh, I think Brad and I talked about that one time at Water Bar and Russ magically fixed it. It's just, for me, that's cool stuff. So I'm rewriting some of these things now for take advantage of that. Why Go? For me, it's simple, and I think for the team, it's simple. Uh, I think a lot of people in here. Um, it's a simple language, great ecosystem, and it's getting better faster. For us, we've been heads down. Most people don't know about us. They, they might know about a lot of the, the people that work there. Um, it's time for us to give back, so stay tuned. We're going to start open sourcing a lot of the stuff we've been doing into the community where we think it's valuable and helpful. Um, and so we're excited about how we're going to go about that this summer. So, thank you. Uh, we've got time for a couple of questions before the next giveaway. Any questions? Yes. How Petri. many data races have you found? How many data races have I found? Um, John, how many were originally in the first pass that you did? Okay, it, it was a lot. Uh, it took it. One of the things is I'm not very good anymore at any of this stuff, um, but my ego thinks I am. So I stayed up till about 4 a.m. and fixed them all so that I could come in the next morning and tell John that it was working. Um, but ever since then, you know, those race flags are in all our CI stuff. You know, so the, all the automated CI tests all those race flags, and and that's what I encourage everyone to do. Uh, especially on something that you think is foundational and, and structurally, you know, a piece of, of your core infrastructure, make sure it passes the, the race detector. Any others? Oh, you guys got to have one good one for me. All right, thank All you. Right, thank you.